Let's do this. Vivi, good afternoon. How are we doing today? Good. How are you guys doing? We're hanging in there. We're hanging Hi, in there. Spencer. I, I thought we How's were gonna everyone? Be, I thought we were gonna be in like a bear market for like a couple for like a minute there. Market. I saw that. And then and then uh but then we bought the dip and then it was all good. I was watching the sky. It was kind of scary, but you know, I, I was <laughs> telling people if you bought on a dip and you had a diamond hand, you're gonna be um paid. You know, one of my, my tickers, the NSPR. Oh my yeah. God, it dropped, you know, because we were on a roll and it completely killed the mo the mama and it dropped um, all the way to like one, like 110. And now it's back up to 131 again. So that's the company that I told you. Uh, we got a lot of, uh, we got inside buys news. So when I was telling you guys about that cardiologist, that is the god of his stand, he, you know, he's an interventionist. So interventionists are cardiologists that when patients are having angina uh, and medication is no longer good for them, they will put a stent in, into their heart. So um, this doctor, Gary Rubin, he is the god of uh, cardiology and he was a pioneer of a stent in the United States and he's 72. So it's been a, a long time ago and he bought more shares of this company so him and the ceo so a lot of people bought uh the company so we woke up today pre-market like up 20 cents because of those news so it's definitely a hold i'm holding that for at least 2 to 50 for short-term gains and then definitely um holding some putting tuck away on my ira for long term because i think this this company can literally be bought out by boston scientific or medtronics any of those companies that are you know the stance um that do a lot of the stance you know to sell the stance to uh to the hospitals all right tell us what we're what's on the radar today what are we talking about so yeah, so I wanted to talk to you guys, just kind of like update you guys and what's going on, you know? So we talk about the NS NSPR, and then we are going to talk about uh, KMPH, you know, when I, I get you guys, I got you guys um, alert, alerted, I can't see alerted, but I told you guys when I bought it, it was below 10. I don't even know what is today, but we got some exciting news. Um, it's 978. We got some exciting news from the FDA. So the FDA uh, just gave the okay for them to um, to start the trials, and they're gonna have uh, the molecule KPA79 that are going to initiate clinical trials next year, but it's gonna be the only one product that's gonna be for treated to stimulant to use disorder. So there's no other disorder uh, for that. So really, really exciting uh, times because we have the PEDUFA March 2nd, and then we have, you know, the this new IND authorization to begin trial. So I feel like this company has a lot of upside potential and I would have been wrong. I think this company is gonna get bought out by Big Pharma because there's too many good things uh, going on with that one. And uh, I, uh, somebody was uh, telling me, you know, you get Twitter and somebody was telling me on Twitter, oh, I'm sure she uh, front loads out her stock and now she goes in and show, guys, uh, a front load is somebody that tells them to buy stock with no fundamentals and then just dumps by, behind you guys. All these companies I'm telling you guys to to not to buy, but I'm telling you what I'm holding long, it's because I still see upside potential or I would have sold. So I'm not giving you guys any tickers that I'm just swinging or I'm just buying today and selling an hour later. Uh, no, I am definitely trading some of my uh, NSPR because I bought a lot of shares and then I will save some for long term. But that trading a big a size allows me to have those shares ride for free on my uh, IRA. So that would be it. And then, guys, how excited do we get with uh, Sandile, huh? Sandile is on fire. I, uh, I alerted like a 68 cents. I've been in and out. And... Um, uh was a pretty funny story because uh my son got my sixteen hundred dollar e-bike stolen the first day of the year 
and I took all his money, $470 out of his uh, Christmas and birthday money that he had uh, saved. And I said, okay, I'm going to teach you why I'm putting on this stock. And I put it down. I think I bought it the second time around for 80 cents. So I got more than my money back for the bike. So if he behaves, I might take the money that he has and put in someplace else and kind of teach him how uh, to trade. Now, um, let me see what else, how are my tickers are doing here, guys? So let me just go here and tell you guys what is going on. Uh, uh, do you uh, want to, uh, Vivi, do you want to, you want to share a screen? If not, I'll just have my charts up. Um, uh, no, no, just put the charts up. I am, uh, okay. I'm just sh sharing my, um, I just have not seen all my, how my, my long-term stocks are doing right now. The ones that I've been talking to you guys to buy. So I just wanted to take a look here. That was a scary, uh, expense. I was literally down 70,000 on my account. And now I'm down five because I have a lot of clean spark and they kind of <laughs> seem to move with the Bitcoin, which I, I don't agree, but they have a mining, but they have so much more than that. Um, uh, so, um, and for some reason it's not showing up. Are you guys having problems with the, are you guys can hear me with the internet? Yeah, we hear can you. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, we hear you. We see you. Yeah. So, okay. So we talk about KMPH, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I um, wanna talk to you guys about a, a new pick that I, I don't, I, it's, it's a long position for me. I am a little underwater with this, um, with this company and I'm gonna make my full disclaimer here why I believe this company is gonna be amazing if you um, take, you know, if you have a little patience. So, the ticker is HJLI. Can you um, put that on for me? Um, okay, so it's a tiny, is a tiny macro. Uh, the reason is this price is because they went to reverse the split. So it's only a 50 million market cap and 1.7 million is the float. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, swings. And uh, they just closed the offering this week and that's why we, we see the drop. Uh, and the reason I'm really, really bullish about this company is that they have a device for chronic deep vein ins insufficiency, which is a, they call a CVI. And presently there's no medical or non-surgical treatments other than compression garments that are available for patients. And check this out. 40% of the patients in the United States have a CVI. So it occurs more frequently in people over 50, most often in women, okay? So they just uh, had a meeting with, with the FDA. Um, they completed 11 patients on the trial and these patients were pain-free. Uh, I met some people at, at Twitter before that had a, uh, family members that suffer from this condition and they're really bullish about this company too because it's, it's a very painful condition. So pretty much what happened is it's when the venous walls or valves in the leg veins are not working effectively. So making it difficult for the blood to return to the heart from the legs. So the CVI causes a blood to pull or collect in these veins and the pooling is called stasis. So if you guys see the pictures of it, it's really, really ugly, the pictures of those veins, and it's really, really painful. So not only I'm very hopeful for these patients, but I'm really, really hopeful for this company. And now think about it, $15 million. And, and, and the try, if you guys go to the website, you're gonna see that the trials were like stellar results. So if you have a patient and hold this company, I think you're gonna be paid big big time with this one. Uh, and uh, what else I wanna talk to you guys about. So we have a K KMPH and then, um, so I am still holding BioCrest for, for some BCRX for anybody that um, haven't seen my show is I believe this company is gonna be bought out one day. So I'm holding long, they have a factor D pipeline. And uh, it's uh, the pipeline, it looks like it's gonna be even better than Alexion pipeline. And Alexion was bought out for 36 billion. 
like two or three months ago. So that's another one. And then um, Travina, T-R-V-N, um, holding that out so long. So plenty of opportunity to get in. I told you guys about the morphine shortage at the hospitals and they have a drug that has the same efficacy with the less side effects, no nausea and uh, and uh, less nausea. And uh, a lot of patients are uh, not only um, allergic to morphine, but also the hospitals. If you see, if you guys Google uh, morphine shortage at hospitals, you're gonna see that there's shortage everywhere for morphine. So they're launching it this, uh, uh, this, um, this, this quarter. So we should start seeing some um, results in sales. Now, um, uh, AUPH, I'm still holding long here. Um, they're launching the drug for lupus nephritis. So uh, another company that I am very, very bullish. And uh, I gave you guys a new ticker. And then another one that I wanted to tell you guys, it's it's a OTC, so it's a pink sheet. Not everybody's gonna have access to this one, but it's LXXGF. So they have an approved diagnostic products that it, it brings the lab into um, the vet, you know, so there's no need to collect the samples and send them out to, um, to the lab. And then they also have some disruptive technology to detect the COVID. I feel like this company, it's going to be amazing. So I put it tucked away into my 401k. And if you guys um, go, uh, you know, if you guys go to Yahoo message boards or just go to Yahoo Finance and look at some of the press releases in this uh, company, it's, it's still very early on, but I feel like um, they're going to do um, a lot of good things out there. Somebody was asking me about HM. What was the company? Uh, let me see here because I'll, I'll check because they say they couldn't grab my attention. Uh, it's a HMCH. Let me see. Let me see. It's a, it's a penny stock. So I want to just tell you guys that, yeah, I trade penny stock more on momentum. I don't hold them long term. So I would not know. The only really company that I believe that it will be a dollar uh, soon is CBBT. If you can put it on the screen, Spencer, CBBT. They have in a merger with a, a already profiting company uh, that has uh, clear masks and they are profitable. So I um, you know some of my investor friends did a, a very extensive uh, uh, research on this. And I'm holding long. I'm not even bothered by uh, the the daily swings. Um, do you want to get some questions out? Let's do it. We got, we got a bunch of questions flying awesome. in, in the chat here. Let's start with this one. Um, have you looked at OCGN for co-vaccine distribution in the U.S.? No, I know that they did really well uh, lately, right? Didn't they get a huge spike on their oh because they remember Spencer was telling you somebody paid more than what the price share. I don't know how they convinced these investors to pay two dollars above the the share price. Um, you know, I really needed to look at to see what the potential for um, market cap is. Uh, you know, if you look at uh, the price levels right now. Now you're three dollars above what the investor pay for, so I would wait to settle and see how long the catalysts are coming before I would enter a position over here. But I'll, yeah. I'll take a look. What was the uh, what was the offering price? Did, was it was five? like seven something. It was yeah, seven se something. That's why it, it went was up. Seven, it was seven sixty five. So let this be a lesson. Even if even if by some miracle. As, as a company does an offering and they price it above the market. In this case, you know, it was about 46% above the prior day's close. And let's say it's going up and they price it at $7.65 and it goes to eight. Don't be that guy or that girl that chases it at no. 18, at $18. No, it's nuts. Don't be that person. You know what, babe, a uh, uh, babe. I want to say babe, Spencer, babe. <laughs> uh, hey, I'll no, take I was it. Gonna... I, 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 I have to talk say, to my girlfriend first, but I'll take it. <laughs> I don't know. My mind is someplace else. I don't know. <laughs> I was going to say that there was always uh, one thing I learned um, at the beginning of my career. I used to chase out of FOMO, but there's always going to have that opportunity 
to get into before the film starts. It, there's always one stock that you can get in earlier. Even, you know, my, you might just get a news and be lucky and just be able to place your water. Do not chase. It's just, for me, yeah. it blows my mind. Yeah. Blows yeah. my mind. Yeah, Somebody was telling me, uh, price target for CBBT, I definitely, uh, I definitely think that, um, uh, CBBT is, um, at, for at least I'm, I'm holding for at least for a dollar. And then, uh, time frame for HJLI. Um, yeah, I would say more like six months, usually devices, cause it's some sort of like device there, they don't need, uh, it's not like, a F, it's not like the FDA, uh, with the drug, you don't need many, many years of research. So I would have definitely, um, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm, I'm waiting at least within six months to get some news, but here's the good thing about this company. If you sit on, on to the lowest of the level, any kind of news, um, the stock went up to 14 bucks before because it's a micro float It's 1.75, 1.75. 1 you don't need much. You don't Wait, need that much. 1.75 million shares. Is that what you said? Yes. Oh. You don't need that much of a you don't need that much of a news. So it's it's for me it's a kind of a stock I like to leave right here, and then I usually trade it in in and out of that stock when there's news. But I always leave a little bit. So I traded before when it went up to fourteen, but I kept a little bit because I like the company. Yeah. What about uh, Bolt? Is a newer issue? Have you looked at that? B-O-L-T? -O no, I have not. I'm sorry, you guys. Uh, no charting data for that. <laughs> All right. Um, and then someone asked if you have a price target for, for BCRX. I, I, don't uh, I don't remember if you said. Yeah. So think about it. If BC, if Alexon got bought out by $36 billion, right? And we're sitting at less than $2 billion with the BCRX. So let's assume they don't issue any shares, right? Which I, they're going to end up issuing more shares because you never know. But so let's assume it up here uh, and it's 36 billion, 2 billion. So 36 divided by two, there's 18 times the value of uh, what Alexion would have been. So that times um, uh, BCRX for now is a 961. Um, that's $160 a share. I think that um, my my price target here is at least eighty dollars for this company. Okay, in the next when twelve months? I know, I wouldn't say unless they get uh, uh, they get, they got a bought out, but I would say like uh, two to three years. I would okay. say so. Okay. This is like a hold the long term for me, but okay. the 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 upside potential on this is amazing. Okay. It's so funny because Spencer, like these people throw these stickers at me, and then I go to my uh, stock tweets, and I realize I traded or I own the stock. And if I was only until today, I would have been so underwater. But XXII, I really like this company, and I had a tons of shares of this company because fighting nicotine. You know, they have this technology to put cigarettes without nicotine and we're going to fight the big guys, you know, the, the whole Marlboro companies and nothing came to fruition, nothing. So I sold, I sold, uh, maybe it's time for me to um, look back and see what, what kind of, uh, you know, what kind of updates I have on this company, but I really like the concept. So I would definitely take a look again. Maybe it's time to, to get back in. All right, what else here from the chat? Producer Aaron, you're dropping the ball on these questions. Come on, man. All right, uh, what else do I see here? Da, 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 da. You just answered that question. Okay, we've talked about all these. Do you have any thoughts on Nancy uh, Macy's Tina Roger and MTR? I don't, I did not get the NATO alphabet there, correct? But uh, uh, <laughs> no, MTR. I'm not familiar with the sticker, unfortunately. Okay. All right. Uh, what do you think of V E R U? Don't know the sticker. Don't, don't know. I also one? wanted to tell you guys that you know the ATNX. We're still waiting for FDA approval. It's now. It's it's low again at fourteen oh six ATNX. So um, great opportunity to add a here. I, I, I swear I memorized the NATO alphabet once upon a time, but I... I AT and X. It, it, Vero, I'm not familiar yeah. with this company. Not familiar. All right. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Um, I'll, I'll get my, my NATO alphabet correct for tomorrow, everyone. I promise. Okay. Um, what about 
My event. Yeah. I love my event. Yeah. Okay. My event is, um, believe it or not, I uh, my old boss was there and um, um, I have an interview. I passed my first interview. I'm still debating if I'm doing this forever or if I'm getting a pharma job, at least for my benefits, because I'm not too sure. So I'm interviewing my event because they do have a product for urinary fibroids and it's going to be over bleeding for women. And so I am actually uh, interviewing for that position. I really like my event. They are a great company. Um, I, I should have start thinking about buying on a dip because I know that they're going to get approval for that drug. So it's interesting. Is a plus. For this oh, one. great question! I should have, and I'm gonna have one of those like Kramers. Like, ta -ta! I needed to to get a, my own little logo. Like, approved. Yeah, we, we all need those Observe. those yeah. those mad those mad money sound effects. I think. Uh, here's wait. Great question. Great question from Brett here. Can you explain What's the up? difference between a phase three trial and then and, and the actual Padufa approval? Of course. So. Um, so FDA trial, I was showing you guys all the phases of the FDA. So FDA trials are the ones that unfortunately only uh, two and a half, only three out of 10 companies make it. So once the drug is approved, they have to do an NDA, which is a new drug application. So once they do the new drug application, the FDA says, okay, we're accepting all your documents, all your paperwork. And then um, we wait, I think, another six months and they set a date for FDA approval. And once you get the FDA approval, you know, like I said, even though you might have a flawless data on fa phase three, but then um, there is, um, for example, I'll give you guys a perfect example, Trevina. Trevina, the data was flawless. I was like, wow. And the, the, the chemist for uh, the CEO for Trevina got a Nobel Prize in chemistry. And I was like, this is a slum dunk. I am going to hold this through Pedufa and I am going to, it's, it's just going to be amazing. And what happened, they, um, there was a voting. So when you have a drug, like for example, KMPH, there's no uh, aid, uh, ad com meeting. So that means that they're not going to vote. I sat on a conference and listened to these, all these physicians and nurses and patients, patients talking about why Ollie was a such important medication, right? And then when it comes to vote by one pay, one doctor voted that they didn't think that it, they didn't like the safety data. So what did they did? They gave the an issue and a CLR, complete, uh, CRL, complete wah, response letter. Wah. If, if I had my buzzer, that's what I would do. Wah, it is so wah. boring, I know. So they issue a complete response letter and told them, hey, we're not gonna approve your drug until you give me some data on QT prolongation so we can feel um, safer. So what they did, they went back. That's why it takes so long. Once you get FDA approval, the, the share price goes down like 50, 60% and the company has to scramble to get more uh, studies done. So they did and guess what? Got approved with flying colors. So that's the process. All right, we're getting some good ones now. Uh, VV, so here, let's go back to, that was a great question, Brett, and great answer. Thank you very much. What about, I we? see. I see the messages here. When when they use, I love trailing stop loss, but okay. you cannot do it in every single um, ticker. Unfortunately, I don't know why E Trade does that. But for example, for um, if I bought a ten thousand shares of a Sandio and I wanted to scale out and I have stuff to do, I want to go back on my Peloton. I'll do ten thousand shares, and I usually calculate. Okay, uh, if it's only eighty cents, maybe two percent, because then goes. I'll calculate what the share price is gonna be, what I'm willing to to pay to lose. So let's assume if the Sandio is two eighty seven right now, uh, two eighty seven minus three percent, it's two seventy eight. That's decent. I would put a stop, a stop trade loss of a three percent and just go 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 work out, do my own thing. And what happened is it moves up with the price. So when it got to three dollars, last three if it, if it drops dips, then you sell for that price. If it went to five dollars, if it drops three percent, you sold for that time. So it lets the move the price to move together with you know the 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 stop loss moves up with the price. So I love trading stop losses. I use uh, it I'm with you. I love them. I, I I use trailing stops when I'm like 
when I don't know what I want to do and I'm sort of feeling a little panicky, it takes away the emotion, right? It takes the emotion out. It, it means if, if uh, you know, maybe if there's a big move down, you get stopped out. Okay, you, you made yeah. a profit. You made a profit. Exactly. Uh, they're I love great, it. They're a great way to take. If you feel like you're getting too emotional and you're and you're going to screw things up, they're the the best way to take emotion out of the equation. Uh, here's a good question. Do uh, you know anything about uh, any companies to watch with diabetes and or insulin? Um, I I just think diabetes is such a crowded market, but I'm holding calls from SENS. It's being out of control. I don't know what's going on there, but they have approval in the summer for their device, their other device or, or extended approval, I think, for to be longer. I don't know what's going on there, but I always love this company. And I have, uh, I'll tell you right now, I have options at $2 for, I'm options for $2 for July 16th. I'm up 7,000. I have a 50 contracts. So that's one that I, I told you guys yesterday on the show, you know, the kids don't have a to, to take that, that monitor every month out of their, their, it stays with them for 180 days. So it's very practical um, for uh, parents. We're getting some really good questions here, guys. This, this is awesome. Uh, <laughs> are, are technicals reliable when training clinical stage farming stocks? That's a really good question. No, you take technicals out the door. When Throw, them the window. For a Throw them out the window. Don't look at our technicals. Like it doesn't matter. Again, for Travina, it went down bad and hit a lot of stop losses. I mean, there was peer manipulation, you guys. Peer manipulation. Those guys are laughing at you guys. If you guys believe in a company, do not put a stop loss before an FDA approval. Just hold it. There's peer manipulation. So no, I don't look at technicals at all. If the, the stock might be like 20% less for that day, but it always happens that way. The same with the AUPH. I held it through. Everybody was sweating and then it gets red. You know, the stock goes red and everybody's afraid, sweating. They were, they were, they were messing with your brains. They want you to sell out of fear. So no, technicals out the door. That's, that's out the door. That's a yes. really, that's a really great question. Yeah, we say that all the time on pre-market prep, right? When uh, when there's fundamental news, technicals go out the window. Out the windows. If when you're waiting for a catalyst, who cares? It doesn't matter what the stock price is, you know. And then it costs the average. If you believe in a company, just keep adding. I never look like, oh my god, is that above the hundred? You know, should I enter now? No, if I believe in a company, I enter any any kind of any time of the chart if I know there is catalyst coming. You know, because I know that's what's going to move the price. Uh, here's a question. Uh, I bet you I can answer it for you. But do you have trail? Do you, do you have trailing stops in your retirement account? I would say uh, I'll, I'll just answer for, for myself first. I'll let Vivi answer for herself. But no, because I don't intend to sell anything in my retirement account. I, uh, you know, I've got a long term. I've got a lot of funds. I got some uh, mutual funds, ETFs. I, I don't I don't make I don't do really any selling. It's mostly just buying. So I I, I would never use, you know, maybe if I was nearing retirement age, I, I I would think about it, but or figure out a plan there. But uh, I you know if, if you're at a point where you're years away from retirement, I, I can't think why you would want to even entertain the thought of selling. Vivi, do you do you agree or disagree? I I um I do a lot of calls and trading on my IRA because that for me that oh, was a way man. for me to. Oh. That was for me. It was a way for me to grow my account is spontaneously. Okay. So Every, I, different strokes for different folks. Yeah. So I have some. You know, every time I I I like for example, I bought ten thousand shares of ENG on my IRA. You know, there's no capital loss gains. There's no capital loss loss. You can buy and sell inside your IRA and not worry about Uncle uh, Sam. So I do that. I have like, uh, why are you laughing? I have like a, a, a certain percentage of my portfolio that I used okay. to, to trade. I mean, hey, it's... Yeah. All right. Hey, look, look, look. Some people say they trade their retirement accounts all the time. If that works for you, it works for you. It doesn't work for me. Um, but hey, to each their own, right? To each their yeah, own. but I mean, I, I have my safe ones that I don't touch. But, sure, sure, you know, sure, like sure. I, I like to to size up my positions and then save some for term. So sure. if I bought 10,000 shares of ENG, you know, I left 2,000 for, for long term. So then I traded 8,000 of those shares and I don't have yeah. to worry. I mean, for example, 
Um, today I traded Sendai. I made ten thousand dollars just just scalping, and I never scalped before. You know, and I was like, wow, this is easy. You know, I was just watching the chart and buying a low, selling high, buying. But I'm gonna pay huge taxes on it because um, <laughs> it was on my E-Trade account. All right, uh, Vivi. Uh, before you leave us, you, uh, why don't you leave us with a final thought, final piece of advice for today? Um, you have anything? I just wanna. No, I just want to thank everybody for following me on Twitter. I hope I, I hope it, I, it's been informative. I hope I'm I'm helping everybody to reach their financial independence with me. And uh, I'll see you guys soon back on Twitter. All right, smash that like button for Vivi. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time.